welcome back to Wildwood Cottage and welcome back to Wales. It's a beautiful day here today. Sun's out, birds singing and uh, the chickens are being their usual grumpy selves. But uh, other than that, everything's fine here today. I hope you're all having a good week. I hope you've had a great week this week and uh, that you're all well and truly enjoying the weekend. Thank you to all my new subscribers and uh, to all you lovely people who've been supporting my channel through Kofi. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I will buy me and the girls a treat with it. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so today I thought we'd have a little look around the garden. I'm not going to do the veg garden because uh, there's not much happening in here at the moment with the polytunnel. A few of my seeds have died off with the heat of the sun because I've not been able to look after them. So I've got to start again. Very frustrated with myself that I've not done a better job with them. But uh, I've been that distracted with the polytunnel. I've not had chance. But um, yeah, my courgettes are doing alright with tomatoes and things like that. So we'll have a look at them in another video. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to show you the polytunnel space and the veg garden in one video. Because I just think there's not there's too much in the garden for me to go around the garden and the veg garden as well. So today we're going to go and do the top part of the garden. And uh, at the moment I'm in the veg garden because it's the only place out of the sun where I can see the camera. And uh, we're going to go and have a look at the rose walk, the azalea, the perennial border and have a little look around the flower borders and see what's in flower. So I'll just turn the camera around and I'll take you up to the top. Right, so we're going to start underneath the sitting room window and uh, there's quite a few things that are coming back now. I'm loving the perennial cornflower, really love this flower. Um, we used to see this when we used to go to the Isle of Skye in May and I always wanted it in the garden and uh, now I've got it all over the garden growing wild so I'm not sure that was a good thing but uh, yeah it's looking really good. It was looking better a few days ago but uh, we've had some quite strong sunshine so a few of the things are starting to struggle a little bit. Um, I love this flower here, I can't remember what it is, if I can remember I'll pop it on the screen for you but I got this one from Farmer Gracie and I've had it for about two years now, I've ordered more and I've got them in round on the yard. Really nice flowers, really pretty and uh, I'm thinking of getting some more for next year because they flower all the way through the summer till about August or September and uh, We've got this lovely little runway in which the uh, bees can get in and they go in like a foxglove flower, go in there, get the nectar and come back out again. So yeah, I have found the occasional bee in there fast asleep, but uh, yeah, my geranium is starting to go over now, it needs cutting in time for the Chelsea chop. All the daffodils are finished. In this tub here I've got agapanthus which is starting to come back nicely as a nice healthy plant which is good. Might be able to divide that next year. Um, in this one I've got gladiolis, I think that's it in this one and a couple of geraniums. So that's coming back. This hosta here was the elderly gentleman or Gordon's and uh, it's coming back. It looks like it's got a bit of slug damage so I'll take those leaves off and uh, it'll come back okay. So I'm really, really pleased that came back because I was I thinking I'd lost that. But now it's come back, I'm really happy. Um, this is my cottage garden border here. I planted a load, sowed a load of seeds in here last year and I've got some more to go in. Um, and it's looking really pretty. I'm loving this white flower over here. This one here. Excuse so the shadows, um, it's not in sun yet. But it's got this beautiful blue detail to the flower. Absolutely gorgeous. I've never never noticed it before. But it's got such a lovely pretty little flower. I don't know if you can see the blue. Just blue veins in it. It's gorgeous. So uh, the flower spike, this one, just keeps flowering up and up and up the spike. Um, and it's very pretty as it comes through. Just these little white balls of white. So yeah, that's doing well. My daisies are starting to come back. They're what's left out of the wildflower mix. Um, <clears throat> this one here is a campanula with the large bells on it. Um, and it's got flower buds on it waiting to come back. So they'll be nice. This one here is my tottering by Gently Rose. And look, I've got a rose. My first rose in the garden. So I'm really pleased about that. I spotted it the other day. It's starting to fade now. 
but uh, very pretty. It's got loads of flower buds on and it's got this gorgeous big flower spike that I'll be able to see from the sitting room with lots of new buds on it. So yeah, so I'm really pleased about that. Uh, round here we've got my peach and I noticed the other day it does actually have baby peaches on it. This is the Red Haven peach that I got off you garden. I'm not going to touch it too much because I don't want the buds to fall off. But uh, it's got loads of these lovely little fairy peaches. Can you see them? Aren't they pretty? They're really tiny and really cute. So these new flower stems came through this year. So it seems to be that it flowers on the first year's growth. So I'm not sure about that. Don't quote me on it. But I've got this nice healthy shoot down here which has also got peaches on it. So I need to have a look in some books and on the internet and find out how to look after the uh, little fruits. But this seems really happy here in the porch. These branches look like they've died off, but um, it has got some nice, strong, healthy shoots on it. It's got four healthy shoots on it. And they've got, or oh, each one of them has got uh, little tiny peaches on. So that's really nice. Um, my pond needs filling up. We've not had a lot of rain really to fill the pond. Um, and yeah, around here I've got my um, irises. The ones that grow on the surface of the soil. This one's a purple one. I've only ever had flowers off it once. Don't know why. But hopefully this year we'll see if we can get some flowers. Um, I believe the corms have to bake in the sun. So I may have to move the pot because it's in the shade here. Now the canopy is up. Um, this is my purple geranium. It has like a pur pinky flower on it. Purple leaves. Really love that. Found that on the local market. Going to see if I can get another one. So that's really good. And have you seen my pond? Doesn't it look wonderful? I'm really pleased with it. Considering it's only been in about a month, it looks like it's been there for ages. I had to clean out the blanket weed the other day because we've had quite a bit of strong sunshine and that seems to bring out the blanket weed and it looks like I've got to do it again. Um, I have put a deep, ve a red veined sorrel in there to get that to grow. And that seems happy in there. It seems to be a good boggy plant. All the plants are starting to come back. I've got some daisies coming through over here as well. These lovely daisies. I've got some forget-me-nots. And have you seen me lovely little light? This does not give off a lot of light. It's my little uh, ladybird. Have you seen it? It's got little bealy boppers on the top. Look, to any of you from the 80s who remember the bealy boppers you used to have on your head. I just thought that was really cute. So I'm going to get another one. Oh, my white geraniums come back. Look at that. Bought that a few years ago when we first moved in. Three years ago, one of the first things I bought. Look, got a white flower. I nearly threw that away, I thought it was dead. So that's good, very pleased. The magnolia here has nearly finished flowering now. Um, it was beautiful a week or so ago, it had lovely flowers on it. But now all the leaves have come back, the flowers are finished. It seems to be the way that it grows. Once the, the uh, leaves are coming back, the flowers fall off because the flowers come first. I've got some beautiful aquilegias this year. I've got this beautiful blue and white blousy one here. I don't plant these, they just come by themselves. Isn't that a gorgeous flower? Lovely and blousy. I've got some more blousy ones around the corner, so I'll show you them in a minute. I did try and transplant a peony, it's wilted a bit, but uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it's gonna come back. I'm liking this little wild bit here. I've decided not to mow all this this year. This is the side of the house, it's got bluebells as well um, and there's all this bit I haven't shown you before because there's nothing really to show you in there. It's all um, hypenicum, wild hypenicum and ferns. So up the top there incidentally I do have hydrangeas and spirea. So I'm going to need to have a look and see if they've come back. I need to have a look at that today. Down here is my pilgrim, I moved her off pilgrim's arch. And uh, I've transplanted her around here. She seems very happy, but uh, no flower buds on it as yet. But a really good healthy stem here. I'm hoping this is going to grow and fill this void here and give me a nice bit of rose. This is just an old pallet um, that I've tied up. And there's some lovely new leaves on it since I transplanted it. As well, lovely geranium in here. There's another rose here that needs planting out. And another bit of rose here that needs planting out. And uh, this one looks like it's got a rose bud. Can you see that little green bud there? 
think that was Gordon's and he asked me to throw it away and I said no. So I'm glad I didn't. Um, let's have a look what else there is. I'm loving my little rockery bit. This needs redoing. I'm going to do redo this in the autumn and do it as a video. Excuse my shadow. But uh, my old is coming back and it's looking lovely. I'm loving this blue flower here. I'm not sure what it is. If any of you know what this flower is, please do let me know. But uh, I have no idea, but it's very pretty. Um, my camellias have finished now. Both of them have finished. The one down the bottom's finished as well. But we're going to have a look at that azalea in a minute. It's nearly finished. Um, this bit of border does need a good tidy up. Um, it's a right mess. I've got some wildflower seeds to sow in it as well. Um, I've got about five boxes of wildflower seeds to go in. So, yeah, we're going to do that. If I come away, lovely aquilegia here. This has just got a yellow centre, yellow stamen, but then it's completely purple. Another wild one. And a purple geranium as well. Um, behind me is rolled doll with loads and loads of flower buds on. Look at that. Flower buds everywhere. I need to take this out really. It's a stock and uh, it's a white one and it seems to have just spread itself everywhere. I think it's a wild one, I'm not sure, but I think it's hindering my rose so that needs to come out. Um, but yeah, I've got lots of lovely flower buds on that. Excuse the hen in the background. There are all my seedlings waiting to go out. Um, so up this part of the garden, this is where the flower border is. These are my magnolias that I've still yet to plant. This is the perennial border that I did in the spring. And this is the border that I enlarged in the spring. Where you can see all the green growth is how big the border used to be. And where all that brown is, is how much I've extended the border. Up here, all this wild geranium is just taking over everything. And I think it needs to come out. Um, I've got a red uh, rhododendron over there that seems to be getting crowded out. It's been absolutely beautiful. It's had a lovely show of flowers on it this year. And that log behind it, I can't see. Let me show you. I've got this beautiful old tree here at the background and I can't see it. I found it in the garden. Um, and this lovely rhododendron so I need to clear as much as it's pretty it's just taken over I need to clear all this pink uh, geranium and pop it up the top of the garden it is beautiful but there's far too much of it I might try putting it along the fence line for the field as well but this one here is an astrantia yet to come back into flower in this new part of the border I've transplanted plants I've got a peony um, I'm not sure what that is. I think it's a tansy. I've got daisy. Um, this one, I'm not sure what it is. I got it off a customer. Um, it has little white bell flowers on it. So I've got a red version of it somewhere. Yeah, so things are doing quite well in this border. My uh, clematis that I thought had died is doing really, really well. Um, I can't remember the colour. I've got a blue one somewhere as well, but that doesn't seem to have done so well. I think that's gone. I'm not sure what this one is, but it seems to be doing really well. So if I keep popping it in this fence, it'll grow around this fence and make everything look really pretty in the spring. Right, down here. This plant here, this one here, was um, off a gardening customer that I used to work for. And he used to call it the Vickers plant. No idea why, but isn't it pretty? Look at those little bells. Aren't they lovely? I've never noticed those little bells before. Got a green tinge to them, a yellow centre and then white. So they're very pretty. I was really pleased that came back because I thought it had died. I thought I'd lost it. And there's a couple people I got it off are no longer alive anymore. And the lady was 86 and the gentleman was 97. And every spring we used to go and look for this plant. He used to take me up to the. Uh, he used to take me up the garden, and he used to say, "Let's go and have a look for the vicar's plants." And uh, this is it. So I'm glad that's come back. All my plants have a story, by the way. These ones, the Pieris, have finished now. Got some lovely new growth on them. The Deutzia is coming back. Got some lovely white flowers just about to appear on it. That usually comes in June, so that'll be in the June tour. 
Um, this is the perennial flower border and it's done really well since I, um, it's done great since I took all the flowers out and divided them. It's looking a lot better. Um, I've got some more of these beautiful aquilegias, these here. I've got purple on this one, but I've also got this one white, pure white coming through. Look at that one. I've not seen pure, pure white ones before. So I'm happy about those. My lupin's got flowers coming back on it. Um, my dad's rose is coming back as well. It's got some lovely new growth on it. I've got two. I've got one that's Dublin and one that's Ruby. But this has put on a lot of new growth. It does need a bit of chicken feed. This is its third year now. But uh, yeah, I've got more aquilegias here. This is very pretty. I went around photographing them last night. And this one's light pink and dark pink and this one has got a lovely yellow tinge to it this one's got pink tinge and this one's got a yellow tinge Can you see the difference in the two but they're very blousy very pom-pommy very pretty i'm loving this purple one and this pink one now can you see it I'll zoom in a bit for you that just there Pretty pretty. Right. So in this border here, I've got some Astrantia. I've got Echinopsis, got Geranium. Along here, I had to take all the Geranium out because I thought it was pink, but as it grew, it became, it was purple. So it had to come out. As uh, I've designed it so as it's going to be pink, white, pink, white, pink, white, all the way along. I did a video about it back earlier in the year. And I put some photographs up of my old allotment. I'll put a link at the end of the video for you and in the i button at the top. And uh, yeah, it was something that was really nice and really striking on my allotment. So I wanted to do it here. So there's going to be alternate pink geranium, white rock, pink geranium, white rock, pink geranium, white rock, all the way down to the end of this border here. And then from the bedroom window and the sitting room window, I'll be able to see the pink and the white all the way along. And it'll be very pretty. It'll be lovely. Here I've got a... Um, rather sort of bent foxglove <laughs> coming back it's a bit bent but uh, yeah it's coming back sadly you've missed the best of my azalea it's looking very yellow oh the again once the leaves come back the flowers fade and uh, yeah it's looking a bit a bit dead at the moment but it's been very pretty it's been absolutely beautiful let me see if i can find some other flower for you camera doesn't do it justice it's been an absolutely gorgeous pink color um but it's nearly finished but that's the nature of gardens isn't it one thing finishes something else just as pretty comes up my still bees are just starting to come there's a flower there here i've got phlox and a pink a white a yellow bell flower i think it's called linkless or something um, but everything's just coming back great very happy um, along here, this is the other camellia next to the shed. Last year it had loads of flowers on it at this time of year and we had hornets feeding on it. The hornets were coming from the, the trees over there and uh, this was just full of hornets to the point that I had to take the flowers off because <coughs> there was I was worried about the hornets stinging me as I was going in and out of the shed. So that's our summer house, our summer room. But uh, yeah, the flowers have gone this year by now. But as I say, this was still in flower till the end of May, at least last year, into June. But uh, it was a late flower. But now it's all gone this year. So this is a lovely, pretty pink azalea that I've planted. I've planted it in different parts of the garden and it wasn't very happy. But it seems to be happy here. So I'm going to leave it here and then that will fill this space here. And then it'll be like a bit of a hedge with the pink azalea and then that azalea together. So that'll be pretty. Do you like my old gate? I don't think I've shown you this before. This was here when we moved in. I'm not going to paint it. I thought about painting it, but I'm not. It's still on its original hinges. Still on its original post. Just here. There's the hinges. There you go. Look, it's got its original hinges. Just in there. And that's its original post, but it's covered in ivy. And uh, trees. So there you go, you can see it better down there. So yeah, I'm going to leave that. Leave it as it is, 
don't touch it. I've got clematis here. This one in the pot's doing well. I might put that on the oil tank where the other one was. It's got flower buds on it. This one's not doing so bad, too bad. It doesn't like the uh, shade, so it's not doing so well. So that needs moving. I did buy two, like this one in the pot. One lived, one didn't. This is the other one. Very dead. So that needs to go in the bin or the compost. This arch here needs something up it. I was going to put a honeysuckle, but that died as well. Um, things have just been moved about far too much, so maybe this clematis could go on there, but I quite fancy a rose on there. I've still got four climbing roses to go in, so I might pop that on there. This view is looking very pretty as well. Um, this is the top part of the garden. Now, what we've just seen is the middle part of the garden, and this is the top part of the garden, so... Excuse me, I'm very tired today, so it's a bit ad hoc, my video today. We're just going to see what we find when we find it. Um, this rose here is Scepter de Isle, and this is another David Austin rose. I love my David Austin roses, but there's a bit of a mix-up. The parcel that they sent me went missing in the post, so they sent out two more of what I'd ordered. Um, and they, they turned up really quickly, the second lot, then eventually the, the first lot turned up, so I ended up with two lots. So this is Scepter de Isle, I've got another one up the garden. I'm loving this lovely white stock here. This is what's down by my rolled doll, so I need to get rid of it. Um, this is an apple tree. In fact, do you know, I think this one might be a pear tree. Yeah, this one's a pear tree, this is a dwarf pear tree, I think it's a conference. Um, and then this other tree here, this is where um, Poppy is, my old 14 year old hen, she died last year, so I popped her under there and that's another dwarf apple tree. Aren't the gems looking lovely? Very bonny. I've got some more here. This is uh, a wildflower, this is pink campions, growing really bushily here, so I might thin it out, I'm not sure yet. I've got dahlias in here somewhere. But they won't come up until the end of the season, sort of August time. I uh, see what I mean about the perennial cornflowers, they're everywhere. That's around my Buddleia. Is one called Buttercup and it does have flower buds on it, and that one is also a David Austin rose. This is a scabious here and it's coming back nicely. But I've got a lot of dead nettle in there that needs to come out. So I need to do something with that. That but uh, this part of the garden has got a bit overgrown. But these lovely dead nettles were beautiful this year. They had lovely yellow flowers on them. This euphorbia is a wild euphorbia. I get quite a few different ones in my garden. I don't know where they came from, but they're not mine. Um, but again, very pretty. This is the woodland bit now, which we're in now, is in the woodland patch. This shed isn't mine. It belongs to the factory at the back. Um, that's another rose arch that I've put up and I've got two climbing roses on there. Uh, my hosta's coming back. I'm really pleased my hostas are coming back because I really thought they'd died. I thought I'd squash them, to be honest, because I've just widened this path here. Um, this part of the garden here just used to be rubbish. When the elderly gentleman Gordon used to do his hedges, he used to just pile all the rubbish here. And it was about four or five feet tall. And it went from there all the way across here to there. And that was just rubbish when we moved in. And the whole thing has been cleared, chopped, burnt, composted, gone. <laughs> so now I've got some lovely plants in here. I've got Everburnum. I believe this is Everburnum. This one with the white pom-pom on. I saw that in a magazine this morning and I believe it's a Verburnum. Ver I've got a beautiful Acer down here. This piece of grass needs to come out. I've um, got foxgloves coming back. Last year I was inundated with foxgloves, but thankfully I got them out before the seeds. So I haven't got too many this year. This here is a rowan tree, so I'm going to leave that. Um, my logs have fell over on my rhododendron over there. Uh, let's get on the bed. This is my lovely wild uh, cornflower again, the perennial cornflower. It's such a beautiful flower. I think it's lovely. It reminds me of those Russian hats for some reason. But yeah, very pretty. Over here we've got a lilac. 
hasn't had any flowers on it this year but this one grows three meters tall so it's going to fill this space here which is what i want and then i can get rid of the laurel then because the laurel poison everything nothing grows well around a laurel if you've got laurel in your garden don't expect plants don't expect flowers but uh, this needs to be got rid of i'm going to poison them um unfortunately but there's that much in my garden the, over here these trees have always been here and that one there is a lime tree now see the height of that lime tree when we first moved in the laurels filled that space between that tree there and that lime tree there now it's quite a big space it's probably about 10 meters that was how big one laurel tree was and it's grown back even though we've taken the top off and we've cut it right down it's growing back as a hedge now i'm going to leave it this year i'm going to cut it down and then next year i'm going to leave it let the rhododendrons grow and then once they start growing up i'm going to get rid of the laurel because they just poison everything as i say so i don't want them and i've got loads of lovely rhododendrons in my garden i've got another one down there which is a white one i've got one here which is a red one this one here with this lovely growth on the top of it is a red one i've got this beautiful pink one pinky white one here which is absolutely gorgeous something's been having a nibble but that's a beautiful one um, that's a viburnum there that has pink flowers on it which is nearly finished um, this is i'm not sure if this is a wild um, euphorbia or if it's one i bought because last year i bought a beautiful lime green one um, and i'm not sure if that's it we'll have to see because it's got no flowers on it at the moment but uh, yeah this is really pretty another another limey green one and up here my hostas are coming back um, i don't mind them getting eaten so much by the slugs because it keeps things away from everything else so yeah, that's it for that little patch. And then here is the archway out of the back gate. I'm going to replace this gate with the door off the um, wood shed, the tool shed. Because I'd like something that makes it look a bit more like a secret garden. I think that would be nicer. So this is uh, Rambling Rector. Got a flower bud on it, it's doing well. It's only been in um, a year because I only built this arch last spring. So, yep. This one is a red rose that I moved. See what I mean? I put this in a week ago and I think the laurel's affecting it already. So, yeah, I think this problem here is because it's got a laurel right next to it. So I need to get rid of that laurel, really. It's serving no purpose. So I think I'm just going to get rid of it. I thought it might add a bit of a privacy screen, but it's not. So this side here, I've got a choice here. It's supposed to grow four metres by four metres, but uh, it's still very small. Been in about two years and that's about how big it's got. So I have another um, plant here. I'm not sure if that's a viburnum as well. I know I did have another one and I can't remember. Uh, but it could be a Ceanothus because I know I bought another one of those because they remind me of my dog that died a few, 10 years ago because they were in flower the day he died so yeah I like to have that in the garden this is a hydrangea which is a white one so this needs to go in um, I thought this had died I've had this about 10 years um, but I'm so pleased to see some growth on this this year so this is go that's going to go on the top ledge with the other hydrangeas this has done really well this year um, this last year was just bare soil, um, but this year it's filled out nicely. Now I don't mind the geraniums filling all this because uh, I'm not planting much in here. It's just going to be flowers um, and I, I quite like to see this as a wild bit. I've got an apple tree there, beautiful shape called Jonas Gold. Uh, I think it's a dwarf. I got that one from Home Bargain for a fiver. So I'm very pleased with that. And then at the back, there, I don't know if you can see on the back there, some old dead blossom on this tree here. And that's another apple tree. So, yep. And then the rest of this border is just flowers.
Anything I find in the rest of the garden, I just shove in this border here. So there's a comfrey there, there's a lupin. I've got a lupin here with a rather weird flower looking on, like weird looking flower on it. And you can see that flower. Looks really fairy. There you go, that flower there looks really fairy. I don't know why. Um, there is the red um, Crocosmia as well. There's also um, Helenium as well, which I got off a customer, off that same people that I got the Vickers plant off. So this is the Rose Arch and the Rose Walk. Now I am so happy with this this year. Have you seen my wisteria on the barn? It's just looking so beautiful. I haven't cut the grass for a couple of weeks and it looks so lush. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I am going to cut the grass this weekend if I can get round to it but uh, I'm just loving the long grass look but I don't want to leave it to grow too long because the lawnmower doesn't like it. Um, I'll show you that in a minute so hang around for a few minutes more and I'll show you up there but I just want to show you this border. In this border here I have this gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous rhododendron. I didn't realise I had one this colour pink but it is, oh it's beautiful, it's so beautiful. Um, it is a dwarf one, it's going to grow about a metre tall. Um, but I couldn't believe the colour of the flowers when I seen them. Absolutely gorgeous. So they're just starting to fade a little bit now in the sun. Um, but they've been this beautiful, really rich, vibrant pink. One, This is one of the true flowers. It's been amazing really, it's been gorgeous. So I've got a buddleia here. I have got a pear tree there. Um, I want to plant another fruit tree in here, so I think I'm going to put another one in the middle. Um, I've got plenty. <laughs> I've got another rosalia here, but that hasn't flowered. Um, oh, this as well is another going to be another rose arch, and I've got here, I've got um, lark ascending, which is a gorgeous peach colour flower. It opens out into like a cup, like the buttercup. It's another David Austin. And it turns a pinky colour as it ages, as the flower ages. And it's got quite a few buds on it now. Um, so I'm looking forward to them in the next week or so. So when they flower, I will come out and I will show you them. Um, this, this one here and on the other side is called Lady of the Lake. Um, I've got another one here. These are the other, this is the other plant that went with the Scepter to Isle that went missing in the post. So I've got two now. So this is going to be the Lady of the Lake arch now. So I just need to build the arch. As you can see, there's no arch here. So just haven't had the time. I'm sure it'll get done eventually, but the roses don't need it this year. So I can always put supports up and build it in the autumn. So yeah, everything's looking very pretty. <clears throat> so let's go and see the last part of the garden, which is this beautiful patch here. I can't wait until all this building's covered by my shrubs but they're still very small. I can't afford to buy big shrubs so uh, I buy small ones. But uh, yeah this arch here this is a wild rose that my parents gave me. Not sure if it's a dog rose or a climber but uh, hopefully it's going to have hips on it for rose hip syrup. So that's that and then these are my uh, field maples. Didn't get to tap them this year, didn't have the time. Missed the, missed the point at which I could. So I'll try that next year. They were in my autumn vlogs when I did Vlogtober. And they were the beautiful yellow trees that I had when I got Covid. So, yeah. Um, over here we have a winter jasmine, which has put on some lovely growth this year. I think that snow that we had earlier, late in the year, has just really made a difference. This is a Waija. I've got a variegated one over there. Um, I do have a Viburnum in here. Another one of those pom-poms. But in this one, excuse the water, it's in the shade here. And I'm not sure it likes its position because it's not got a lot of growth on it. But this is it. It says full sun or partial shade, so I think it's getting too much shade. 
So I might move this one, pop it over on the other side. This again, I, I widened, that's where the edge was of the border and I widened it again about a metre, three quarters of a metre. So I need to plant this up and put some more flowers in. I've got plenty to go in. Um, my Gora died. I had a white one and a pink one, so I need to replace those because I love those. They're beautiful flowers, but I think the frost got them, um, sadly. This is one of those fairy leaved flowers and it has a pink flower on it, but no flowers on it yet. This rose here is Gardener's Delight. Again, it's a David Austin rose. It does have one little bud on it. This used to be where the Lady of the Lake roses are and I moved it to put the Lady of the Lake in. So this is hopefully going to fill this arch here and screen a bit of that while the shrubs are growing. Got some clematis here to go in. There you go, I've got a kiwi, I've got a fig, and I've got some more clematis to go in. So over here, this is my pampas grass. I did put a pink one in, but it doesn't seem to have done anything. Don't think it's gonna to come to anything. Um, I've got another red rose here, which has got one flower bud on it. Uh, oh no, it's got a few flower buds on it now. It's got one there, it's got some at the back and some there. It needs a chicken feed because this one hasn't had a feed. Um, this is a Loganbury. I thought I could grow it up the side there for fruit. And then at the back there I've got, this is the gap by the way, that used to be that laurel. See that hedge there? That used to fill all the way along there, up there, and then across there, that is how much space. And it's probably about 15 metres actually looking at it now. The uh, lime tree seems to be doing really well. Now it's, but that's why the lime tree is growing on that angle, because it got pushed by that laurel. So it's not gonna grow that big. I was delighted the other day when I was walking in here, I was looking around this flower border here and another one of my old lady customers who died about three years ago, used to have a garden full of pink Japanese and enemies and she was forever giving me pieces and I, I'd left them out that long they never grew but uh, I brought a bit when we first moved in here and I put it in the soil and it never came for three years we've been here nearly and it didn't do anything anyway let me see if I can find it because I came up here the other day and had a look and uh, I found a piece there it is this piece here I was delighted when I saw it. So that's Sylvia's uh, Japanese anemone. But uh, this is the laurel. So up here, I've got a, in my shadow here, I've got a um, rhododendron. So that's growing nicely. I've got another one here. And these are two metre tall ones. So these will fill that space nicely. This is my Acer that I bought in B&Q about 10 years ago for a pound. And it's been in a pot for years. But isn't it beautiful? Beautiful colour. It used to always be pink when it was in a pot. I didn't realise it was so yellow. But uh, yeah, very happy. This one is a Forsythia. And I got this off a garden table in a local village where I go and do cleaning once a month. Um, but I'm so pleased about that Japanese anemone. And then down here... Yeah, this is one I got in the garden centre that I thought it was dead. Um, it has purple berries on it and it's called Caliparpa. Caliparpa, is that right? Profusion. And I bought two of them for a pound each and I thought they were dead. But uh, it just goes to show if you leave things in. It's got leaves on it. I bought that two years ago. And I've got another one here, down there. And I thought they were both dead, but they've come back. This tree here was a white mulberry. It had to be moved off the, lo the lawn when uh, the builders put the oil tank in. And unfortunately, it died. And it was a retirement plant for Gordon when he retired from the um, Scouts, I think. I know it was special to him, but there's absolutely nothing on it this year. Not sure if it would put it in the wrong place, but it had hardly, hardly any roots on it when it was moved. It was going to have a digger go over it, so the only thing for me to do was to um, take it out and see if I would get it to grow. 
It did have shoots on it here last year. I can't see anything on it this year, but you know, after what's happened with this one here two years later, I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to see if it comes back. The guy who took my trees down just said, oh, just take it out, put it in the compost. It's not going to grow. So this tree here is a damson, I think, and then I've got another pear tree next to that. And I've got some uh, gooseberries. I like to plant fruit in with my trees and my, my flowers. So this is the rose walk that I did back in the spring. I don't know whether you'll remember. We'll just do a quick tour of this because I might do this and show you it through the season. But uh, the roses are coming back nicely. Uh, a couple of them are getting dwarfed out by the weeds, so I might have to thin them out a bit. But uh, this dead one here was a camellia off an elderly lady who lived next door in our old house. I got it about 15 years ago. And I'm hoping and hoping and hoping that it's going to grow, but it's not doing anything. Um, but yeah, along here we have an old English rose, which is this one here. This is a nice old English rose. And then we've got fruit, that's a jewel plum tree. That's a pear and an apple tree. That one's a cherry. And then I've got another cherry. And then I've got a baking apple an ordinary apple and a baking apple. And then these roses here, this one is Queen Elizabeth. She's done fantastic since she's been in um, and she does have a flower bud on her. She's got green fly, squeeze them off. Yeah, so she's done very well since she's been in. She's had a good mulch with chicken compost, so I need to do that on all the others. This one here is Abundance. You see the big massive fat flower buds on that, they look going to be lovely. This one here is Peace, I got it off a lady, that's the same lady I got the Japanese anemone off, she bought me it as a Christmas present, so I've got that one. This one here is a Yew Garden rose, it's supposed to be yellow but it's not looking like it's going to be yellow to me. Um, Maybe so, yellow and red maybe. Got a bit of green fly on these, don't know why, I have to put some soap on them. Um, this one was Gordon's, he wanted me to rip it out of the veg garden and throw it away, but I said no, so I'm glad I didn't. And then I do have some currants and things like that under here, so I won't go too much into that. This here is the barn. And look at my wisteria, isn't it beautiful? It looks lovely from the house against the grey wall. I'm really pleased with it. Now I'm not sure whether to convert this into a workspace, it would be a fantastic weaving shed. But uh, it's just looking so pretty with all the, all the flowers in it that are growing. So I'll have to have a think about it, because I don't really want to lose this uh, wet area, but I'm sure I could get it to grow over the front. That wouldn't be a problem. And maybe just leave it to grow over the top. So we'll have to see. But uh, I did put some ranunculus in, but they don't seem to like it. Wasted my money on them. I'm not going to buy any more bedding plants. That's it now. I'm just going to have perennials. Um, there's no wisteria. Gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful. The bees seem to love it. And then last but not least, this is Scepter de Isle. The second one. which is doing really well. Doing better than the other one. Seems to like this position better. Um, and these are more euphorbia that came up that I haven't planted. So, yeah. I think that's it for today. You've had rather a long garden tour there, haven't you? I may have to start breaking it up even more because it's just going to get even more bonkers as the summer goes on. So, I mean, we're only in May. But uh, I may do this, I may split it up into three separate videos for you. Um, as time goes on and do this bit as one video, that middle bit as another video and the veg garden and polytunnel and yard as another video. So yeah, we'll have to see. Anyway, I'm going to go in and get my breakfast. I just thought I'd show you a quick look around the garden and uh, I will see you in the next video. The next video is going to be the garden, uh, the veg garden and the polytunnel space so you can see what's happening with that. Sorry I've been absent this week, had a lot going on but getting back to normal now. And uh, I will see you in the next video. So if you have liked my video, please do like and subscribe. Please do hit the notification bell. I'll tell you when I upload new videos. 
and uh, if you want to buy me a coffee or the girls a treat I do have a Kofi account and uh, there's a link in the description bar below so if you want to find me on any other social media I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Wildwood Cottage I'm also on Pinterest and I also have a vlog under Faithful You where I vlog about this place so yeah I will see you soon all the links are in the description bar below or on the um, headline picture of my YouTube channel so I will see you soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now. Bye bye.